Hello, this is Mike, and this is a very short series of tutorials on career mode for Kerbal Space Program uh, 1.05, uh, done due to a single request from a co-worker who has bought the game and is having some, uh, some issues with their first build-out. Um, it is possible to slightly dead-end yourself in career, um, so I thought it might be something of use to people to have a basic guide just to the early steps. That being said, this is not going to go into a great amount of detail on the later progression. We're just looking at it, getting people through the first through tech, first three or four technology tiers. So, <clears throat> welcome to the Space Center. Obviously, there's uh, nothing here yet to speak of. All our buildings are level one. Uh, we're going to start, as you always do in Kerbal, with picking up a, uh, a couple of contracts. We'll uh, gather some science from Kerbin and we'll launch our first vessel. Um, you obviously want contracts for the money, the prestige, and the science that it gets you. That being said, our first launch is not going to be terribly exciting. In fact, we're probably not going to go anywhere. Uh, you'll grab a capsule. Your Mark I capsule is your only option at the start. And put what science equipment we have on it, which would consist of a goo canister. And then we'll launch that. Not terribly exciting, I know, but there is a reason. On the launch pad, as soon as it completely loads, thank you very much, we'll get a crew report from Jeb and keep that data. We'll do the same with the goo canister. And we'll keep that data. We'll EVA Jeb to take an EVA report. <clears throat> now we're actually going to want to take a second EVA report on the ground. He currently counts as flying uh, due to him hovering like that on the ladder. So you'll store experiments by right-clicking on the capsule. Choosing store experiments, stepping down off the capsule, and he can do an EVA report actually on the surface save that as well. And we'll just, out of neatness's sake, reboard the capsule and recover vessel. <coughs> I have a cold, so apologies for the <coughs> grunting noises. But so now we have 13 and a half science. We have a live Jebediah. 13 and a half science will actually buy us both basic rocketry and Engineering 101. Engineering 101 has the Science Junior part in it. This is important. The focus in your career path through these first levels is going to tend to build out first on the lower tier here, um, with your goal being to get to electrics at a cost of 90. Um, once you get to electrics and have probe cores, solar panels, and the better batteries, you'll have built out, obviously, into your basic rocketry and flight control as well. You'll be able to go almost anywhere reasonable, gather science, and complete your contracts. But as is right now, we've picked up basic rocketry, which gets us uh, some basic engines and boosters, some fuel tanks, and Engineering 101, which gets us the Science Junior, um, along with decouplers, uh, which will be very useful, and the Communicatron. We're going to try to bring most of our science back and get full value for it, but it's nice to have the radio option. So, for our first launch in this fine space program, uh, since we are planning on leaving the ground, I don't know why I grabbed a new one of those, we'll put a uh, symmetrical pair of goo capsules on. We'll put the only parachute we have access to on, yay us. Um, honestly, we probably do not need a heat shield on what we're about to do um, because we're going to put a Science Junior on here as well to get us more science. And just a basic flea solid rocket booster. This horrible looking rocket uh, should actually return to Earth safely on a single shoot, just. 
uh, which is important because we do want to be saving money. This is career. And I'm going to put fins on it. It's probably going to be horribly unstable in any case, but that's fine. Let's save it and launch it. We have no thrust control with the solid rocket booster. We have uh, no attitude control because Jeb isn't skillful enough. So we're basically just going to launch. Hope we can bear a little bit west to land in the ocean and uh, that we don't die. The reaction wheels will let you do a little bit of steering here. I'm pulling it onto the 90 degree heading, trying to aim it out into the ocean. And even the flea with this load is actually going to go, yep, we've actually gone supersonic. We're over 300 meters per second and still climbing. But we're about to run out of aluminum oxide, and yes, we are now just a bullet going upwards. So while we're uh, in flight above carbon, let's see if the mystery you actually cares that we're in flight above carbon. Um, it does. It will actually net us seven science. Excellent. While we're up here, we'll observe the science junior. which gives us 17 and a half science. We'll have Jeb look out the window and do a crew report. Three and a half science. And we'll save the uh, the other goo canister for splashdown when Jeb will do an EDA. So we are decelerating. Uh, we're at 159 meters per second and dropping. Aerodynamics has changed enough in 105 um, it is worth knowing that you can, to a certain extent, steer the descent of a capsule. And by a certain extent, I mean by a few degrees. Uh, there is a, a minor glide effect. You can take advantage of that by trying to slow the rate of uh, descent of things that are going at a, preferably at a subsonic rate, or at least slower than a thousand meters per second. And of course you will get tumbling and the like. And we have reached our apoapsis at about 7,110 7, meters. Now we're going down. This thing is uh, wonderfully aerodynamic at going nose first wherever it goes. So right now I'm pulling the nose up as much as I can to try to slow our descent a bit. Not that we're in any danger of trouble here. If we even approached, uh, say, 200 meters per second, the safe deployment speed for the chute is about 250. Uh, if we even get close to that, I'll just pop the chute. Uh, you will notice we will make the ocean, it looks like. You would get slightly more money for the parts recovery by landing it at Kerbal Space Center, um, but I do want to be doing some science in neighboring biomes. And science is going to be your main concern. Um, it is possible to back yourself into a corner by having large expenditures of cash, especially on building upgrades. More likely, you'll spend your science points in a way that does not allow you to progress cleanly into more science, and that's where you'll have uh, issues and difficulties. We are passing 180 meters per second. 185, 186, 187. Yeah, this thing is quite aerodynamic, this lawn dart. And we're almost to 200, so let's go ahead and, just safety's sake, we'll go ahead and pop the chute. Uh, the chute won't fully deploy until we hit 1,000 meters in any case, so while it slows us here, it won't slow us massively. As a matter of fact, we're still accelerating, which is kind of impressive. 197, and we are slowing now. No, I lied. <laughs> I don't think we're going to make 198, though. Especially not if just me wiggling the capsule, or wiggling the rocket, I suppose, is actually helping bleed a little bit of speed off, just the, uh, just so that it's not falling perfectly lawn dart-like downwards. 
192 meters per second here. We'll shoot his opening. Jeb is about to get a really nice high G present as the rocket uh, reverses. Oh yeah, it's about 10 G he pulled on that. Thankfully he appears to be made of titanium and rubber and that didn't bother him at all. Uh, mods wise, quite likely the only mod you'll see me use in these tutorials will be either Kerbal Engineer or just the Delta V uh, measurement uh, using MechJeb. Um, mostly either one of those two will give you the information you need on your ship as far as Delta V aboard. Uh, if you're planning missions, obviously not missions like this, but planning interplanetary or in-system missions, um, having a Delta V chart is also very useful, knowing how much Delta V you need to get to places. Uh, that is something you can find online in a variety of resources. Uh, the Kerbal Space Program forums uh, have an excellent selection of material. And welcome back to oh, Kerbing Jeb. So, at the ocean real quickly. Don't forget to observe your other mystery goo container. The goo immediately escapes into the water, but we get the science. EVA job. And go ahead and uh, take an EVA report there. Flying over Kerbin's water. Since it counts him as flying over Kerbin's water, we're going to be cheap and do the same thing. Oh, come on, Jeb. You can store that. Yes, store your experiments in the capsule. Do another EVA report actually swimming in the ocean. Very good. Uh, rather than climbing back in, we're going to cheat and just recover. It only recovers the vessel that you currently have set as your active vessel. In that case, that was Jeb. Jeb is back. He's brought 8.2 science with him. That's wonderful. We need to recover the ship as well. So make sure you don't leave it sitting out there, because it has an additional 38.4 science on it. So now we have 59 and a fraction science. Radial shoots are going to be something we're going to want, as boring as survivability is, I always take it at this point. Um, from stability, Larger fins are nice, and we do have enough points to get both, so let's go ahead and get stability. Come here, stability. It's going to give us some fins that will stabilize us, and some radial decouplers, but most importantly, we're going to pick up general rocketry, uh, which gives us a selection of liquid fuel engines. Uh, most importantly, the swivel. That is a gimbling liquid fuel engine. That's going to be important to almost everything we do. Please try to ignore the fact that I have some KW rocketry mod engines in there. We're not going to use those. Well, we should real quickly clear up our contract situation. We launched our first vessel. Hooray for us. We gathered scientific data from Kerbin. Hooray us. We set a variety of world first milestones, all of which were worth money. That's excellent. Uh, we'll nip back over. We have a variety of contracts available. They want us to test a radial mount parachute at 2,000 to 7,000 meters. Hmm, speed 60 to 250 meters per second. It should be possible to do that without destroying another mission. So let's take that. Uh, real quickly, we will do, and do always watch these, we have a test the RT-5 flea solid fuel booster at the launch site. Um, effectively, that means as long as we use a flea as the first stage of our little rocket that we're going to do the radial parachute test on, we'll get both of those contracts. So we know we want the radial parachute that we just bought, and we know we want this flea as the primary stage. Uh, we do have a better, more exciting fin now which uh, we're going to go ahead and use, although I will probably put that, and we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. 
we're going to lob, if we can, this rocket a little bit farther. I will use stock parts, though. Um, we, hmm, we might potentially need a heat shield because we have a science junior, so let's take a heat shield. We're going to want to separate that from the rocket, so we will use a stack decoupler. And now for our second stage, this is going to be a two-stage, well, technically it's a three, but there's no propellant on the third stage. For the liquid fuel section of our rocket, we'll use two or three of the basic fuel tanks. Swivel engines are expensive. We will set enough world first, we're going to pay for this. And since the goal of this is going to be is going to include parachute testing. We're going to go ahead and put, for reasons, a pair of radial parachutes on the Science Junior. Um, normally we'd use a bigger solid rocket booster on this, but we're only using it to make the one contract. Effectively, I would usually just use a small liquid fuel rocket for this given the fact that we're going to lose that solid fuel rocket. But this is probably a terrible idea, by the way, putting fins this high up. Uh, but we're going to see if it'll work. That looks suspiciously like it won't work, and it will flip. Now let's find out. Uh, in your staging, we're going to want... I tend to use the nose parachute first, in case I have to do some emergency braking. Since we want to make sure that we deploy one of the two radial parachutes at an appropriate altitude. We're going to actually separate them into two separate stages. So if we pop one, we need to pop one early because it needs to be going fairly slow when we pop the chute. Uh, we will be able to do so. And we want the liquid fuel engine to go off as soon as we pop the decoupler. And let's launch that. Um, as I said, this may be a perfect example of why you don't want the draggy components, the fins of the rocket, that far up the rocket. I suspect we may end up planting this directly into the ground. And we are also going to try, if possible, to land somewhere not the ocean this time, to get some different science. Well, yeah, it doesn't really want to fly straight. But thankfully, the solid rocket booster didn't uh, last long enough to really be an issue. You see, we can't steer because we're using the swivel engine, and it gimbals enough that we actually have some control over our attitude. Uh, that's important because <laughs> the fins we're using have no attitude control. They're just aerodynamic fins. They don't have rudders. They can't steer. So what little steering we were getting was using the reaction wheels in the capsule. Which does take electrical power, which is something we don't have a lot of yet, because we don't have batteries. I'll throttle up a bit. We're not exactly going fast here. And we're arcing out toward the mountains. And it, yeah, it does not look like we're going to remotely get high enough to do any uh, interesting high-altitude science. That's okay. Let's go ahead and throttle up all the way. Which is asking for trouble, but that's fine. Uh, right now this has an unreasonably high thrust-to-weight ratio, which means that it could do something fun like flipping out pretty easily. but it's remarkably stable for what it is. Oh, we completed that. Hmm, maybe we didn't have to deploy that. Shoot, maybe we just had to carry it. We completed the flea test. Oh, nice. We hauled the radial mount parachute into flight. We didn't actually have to deploy it. Interesting. And a few more speed records. Excellent. Um, 
our apoapsis is going to be 40,000 meters. That quite probably will not give us any additional science. But let's go find out. And we'll just accelerate time. Passing 35, 36, 37, 28, 39. change. We are barely breaking 40,000. We didn't break 40,000, actually. Air resistance slowed us. Uh, we do. We did manage to reach Kerbin's upper atmosphere, however, so this is going to be sciencable goodness. So let's go ahead and get that. Let's have Jeb do a crew report from up here. And since we are dropping towards Earth, attached to a large dead rocket, Hmm. We do have two radial parachutes and a cap parachute. We might be able to land that entire thing and save the engine, which otherwise will crash into the ground and cost us money. Um, so despite the fact that this is a silly idea, let's see if we can actually parachute the entirety of this rocket. Uh, we are actually headed <laughs> well past the mountains, it appears. There they are. KSC is back there. Or KSP, excuse me. Actually, this KSC. What am I talking about? Kerbin Space Center. We are going to rotate. We're coming down at 800 and well, 800 plus meters per second in a rocket that really does want to go nose first. We may have to ditch it if we cannot decelerate sufficiently on the way down. I'm actually trying to tumble it. Tumbling is a cheap trick. I've tumbled probes from orbit without a heat shield. Uh, it tends to distribute the heat, obviously, but it also slows them much more rapidly since they can't set in whatever their aerodynamically happy spot is. So it's, it's worth trying as a sort of cheap braking maneuver. Quite probably draining, yeah, we're draining the batteries pretty severely doing this, but we should have enough electricity. I'm sure Jeb's not best pleased with mission control telling him to bring the entire rocket down in one piece, but hey, these things cost money. Oh yeah, now that we're in thicker atmosphere, it's really dug in with the fins. to jettison. 7,000 meters and falling air. We have to jettison. We may have left that too long. We may be burying Jeb in a matchbox. All right, that's what you get for getting greedy. We're going to try an emergency shoot at too high a speed in the hopes that it would slow us a little. It did. Will it slow us enough to deploy the other chutes? Possibly. We have two. We can sacrifice one, which we will do. That gets us below the line. We will deploy the other. Well, we almost killed Jeb. Oh, and that was our... That was the rest of our rocket just socked into there. Oh, little bits of it still going. <laughs> Lovely. So Jeb is now descending upside down to the ground which is fine. That's better than digging a big hole in the ground, which is what I thought we were going to do. The funny thing there is if we had had aerodynamic fins on that that allowed for a little bit of steering, we might have been able to flatten out its glide path just enough to slow it and rescue the whole thing. And that did not occur, unfortunately. And probably the rest of the crew back at KSC will give Jeb a hard time for landing upside down, but you know, any landing you can walk away from. Uh, we are down on what looks like coast material, so let's observe our spare mystery goo canister. Uh, oh, it's Kerbin's Deserts, actually. Nice. We'll keep that data. We already have a crew report from the upper atmosphere. So let's go ahead and EVA Jeb. Do an EVA report. Oh, 
over the desert. Lovely. Store that experiment. And drop off into the desert where he can do another EVA report. Very nice. Oops, did it take? Oh, no, it did. Okay. So we'll recover Jeb. Remember, we need to recover the vessel as well because he's out of it. Uh, it is possible to clamber back into the capsule if you're lucky, but it takes a long time and a lot of effort, so I'm going to cheat, go to the tracking station, and uh, just recover our vessel. That vessel had an additional 44.6 science in it, and that leaves us with 61.3 science in the bank. Sixty-one point three science will allow us to get one of the rank forty-five or the tier forty-five cost items. Um, I'm going to get basic science. It has a basic battery pack. It has the thermometer, which is another science uh, a science instrument. Therefore, that's more science on every flight. And has some additional things that we're not going to use right now, but they'll be nice to have later, like radiators. Also, a state Putnik. Uh, State Putnik will allow for some remote flights if need be. And it is lighter than a capsule, so it is easier to get into orbit. And World First Milestones. Um, it would be nice to have some uh, stabilizers that actually let us steer, but that's fine. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this. There are some things we can do immediately uh, to make some money test a SRB at the launch site. Great, let's do that. Um, test a Terrier liquid fuel engine splash down at Kerbin. Well, there's a trick. We may want to keep this contract open for as long as we can because that will allow us to cheat and use the Terrier. Um, but that's a... We'll go ahead and do that. We'll do it one quick test launch on the platform. Uh, since we probably don't want to kill anybody flying a ridiculous solid rocket booster uh, with no controls, we'll take a State Putnik. And since this State Putnik may go far higher than it has any right to, we'll uh, put a decoupler on it. We'll put a battery pack on it. Actually, we'll put two battery packs on it to keep it balanced. thermometer is sufficient. If we can get it balanced, one goo canister on top. Actually, let's be smart. No idea where this is going to land. We may burn that science junior up because I'm not going to put a heat shield on it. But let's, uh, Let's assume that our remote probe may actually go somewhere worth doing science. That's a really ugly piece of probe, uh, but that's fine. However, to get it down alive, uh, we do need to put shoots of some sort on it. Uh, we are going to recover this, so we'll get our shoots back, so I'm not terribly worried about cost, so we'll just be lazy and put a pair of radial shoots on it. So, oh no, I can't remember if that was the hammer or the thumper we needed to test. Hmm. Uh, I'm almost certain it was the hammer. But we'll find out, won't we? When we go out to the launch pad, we'll be able to tell. So that is the world's worst remote probe. You may want the thumper tested. We'll find out. You can look at your contracts in the upper right. It is the hammer. Okay, we do have the correct one on. Um, this is not going to go anywhere where <laughs> we can actually do any science. Um, unless we landed in the grassland, which is possible. So let's get out of dodge. This has basically no reaction wheels. We'd have to get insanely lucky for it to land anywhere useful. And it's probably going to go straight up like an arrow and straight down for like a brick. But hey, we've got our SRB tested. Congratulations us.
point of science, point of prestige, and 4,500 ker bucks. That SRB on its own with this limited load is passing 800 meters per second, 900 meters per second. We're getting a lot of shock heating, 1,000 meters per second. Okay, we're going a kilometer a second. That's, uh, that's pretty outrageous for this rig. Oh, we triggered our decoupler, and something really interesting happened. The Science Junior and <laughs> attached bits slowed down enough instantly that the, uh, the spent solid rocket booster flew upward through it like a bullet, destroying it. That's interesting, and not something I would have expected to have had happen. That being the case, if you had escape, you get an option to revert flight. Revert flight to launch. You will be doing that in KSB. So having learned that, uh, let's do that again, preferably without the explosion. And off we go, back to a thousand meters per second. That's really interesting. KSP will surprise you. I'd never seen a solid rocket booster fly through a payload like that. Sorry about the lack of witty dialogue here. Doing it a second time sort of leaves me just staring at it. I will say while we're up here, uh, you can do science on foot around KSC, um, there are seven plus biomes, and there's a lot of science to be had there, but rather than by doing it by foot, we'll do that in a bit when we can make a ground-based, jet-powered science dragster. That'll be in an upcoming tutorial, probably part two of this. Uh, this time, we'll actually leave this thing alone to decelerate a bit. It is sad not having reaction wheels in the state Putnik, we could have turned this to land on something interesting um, not happening today. Our velocity is still quite high. We are going to peak at an apoapsis of 5,400 meters, not quite space, which is unfortunate. We actually could have got a lot of interesting science if we made it to space. Um, it is going to land in the ocean. We have not used the Science Junior in the ocean yet, so that's a good thing. That'll be a variety of science points. Um, we'll go ahead and cheat and accelerate time here to the apoapsis. Where we will jettison the solid rocket booster without it killing us for a change. Bye bye, you miserable thing. And so now our little state Putnik is going to uh, plummet gently to Earth. While we are up here, we will go ahead and log temperature. Um, or should we? We should probably pick it up in the ocean. We will have lots of opportunities to pick up upper atmosphere temperatures as we're going along. So let's not save that. Let's go ahead and accelerate time. Hopefully we won't burn up. This does not have the reaction wheel in it, so I cannot do the trick of tumbling it to keep it cool. So we're going to hope... Ooh, it's coming in awfully fast. We're going to hope that it's light enough that it may manage to decelerate in the upper reaches of the atmosphere. I mean, we're 20 kilometers high, we're at 630 meters per second and dropping. And it's conveniently... F oh, really? Interesting. Our radial parachutes were just destroyed by aero forces and heat. Um... What? They weren't... De oh, good lord. Here's another nice thing about Kerbal. <laughs> Reverting your flight to your, uh, to your launch. Staging is important, boys and girls. 
if you have your, <laughs> your parachutes staged with your decoupler and you press your decoupler you'll deploy your chutes which I did effectively in space so as soon as we got back far enough down in the atmosphere uh, that they dug in uh, they ripped off yeah we'll just uh, we'll speed this part of the video up uh, so I won't talk for a minute here right so this is about where we were when everything went so terribly terribly wrong uh, we are descending at a pretty ferocious rate 658 meters per second and climbing no oh, it is now actually de it is reducing we peaked out about 658 and gave up uh, we're at 21,000 feet we are landing in the ocean uh, this time we do have parachutes although we uh, definitely cannot open them at this speed we have two goo canisters I sure we've done science at this altitude but uh, let's just check well we could pick up 1.6 we do have a spare one let's go ahead and keep data science points or science points looks like we're headed for the bay although this thing is wobbling so it may end up yeah it's going to it's going to land the rotation of the planet has ensured that we're going to land at the space center well, it's good Bob and the boys won't have to go very far to get it. Actually, I think we're going to hit uh, we're going to hit in the grasslands up here, which is nice. That's a biome we haven't messed with. Oh yeah, this is fine. This thing has decelerated to 166 and counting down. We're obviously close to KSC. That will be good for our recovery. The farther away you are, the less money you get back for the parts recovered. Um, we're assuming it's the cost of taxis to go find the bits. And without having a uh, Kerbal Engineer running to show you your real altitude above the surface of the ground, um, one of the only ways you can actually see where you are in relation to the ground is look for your shadow. Helpful when you're doing powered landings. Or if you're time accelerating towards the ground. Uh, if you time accelerate all the way into the ground, occasionally you will blow up a spaceship. So I don't recommend doing that do turn off time acceleration before you touch down. And our probe falling at a feather like 2.7 meters per second returns to ground. State Putnik has survived to fight another day. I'm going to do some science while we're here. Log temperature here in the grasslands. We'll go ahead and do the Come on, Science Junior. Do the Materials Bay. Yeah, 7.5. Not as exciting as the orbital science, but points are points. And we'll do a Mystery Goo on the ground as well. And we'll go ahead and recover that vessel. I mean, I think that's enough uh, for a first go around. That's. I mean, there's another 31.8 science there. We've got. 200,000 funds in the bank. We have a, enough science uh, to just about buy into the next tier here. We're at 31.8. It's quite probable that the next thing we're going to buy won't be any of these, uh, possibly with the exception of aviation, the first aviation package. We can probably make enough science on a next major mission in the next tutorial to buy electrics. Um, but we'll see about that next time. That's uh, that's it from me today. Try not to explode any more than is absolutely necessary. And uh, have a great one. Thanks.